welcome to the land of dead yet. <laughs> Call that Lady Pamela, and yes, that was written for Pamela, who many of you know. She sends out my emails for me and uh, fills my orders. Uh, she has been a friend and has worked with me for many, many years. So uh, I wrote that for her. Yeah, I wanted something kind of elegant and you know, kind of Renaissancey, a little Celtic. Uh, so appropriate for the day after uh, St. Patrick's Day, don't you think? And um, this is indeed in dadgad tuning. So, uh, so take out your guitar and uh, drop that sixth string to a low D, and, uh, and the first string also to D. Second string goes down to A. So we have D A D G A D. That's your dadgad tuning. So uh, it's, it's a nice tuning to compose in, and it's got some really fun things. I put out a little video on my YouTube channel and. You know, composing in dadgad and uh, it's when you start off it one thing I noticed about it is it's very symmetrical <laughs> so this uh, this tuning that works so nicely with Celtic tunes I mean just playing the open strings it sounds good it sounds Celtic already right and then uh, if you play anything on the second or the fourth string fourth uh, frets or open strings whatever you do there it sounds good it sounds you know kind of Celtic as well, you know, so all I'm doing is wandering around. Wandering around. All those are second, fourth, and open, so just straight lines across the fingerboard. I know some of you have worked on that uh, all scales and all positions book, which is, you know, lines going across the fingerboard, and, you know, so, you know, on standard tuning, you've got straight lines and squiggly lines. Well, in dad yet you can do it all just straight lines just all the way across so anything on the second and fourth sounds good and open and then fourth and you could uh, if you go to uh, fourth and fifth and then that there you go you get you get, you get this nice little interval so you got that c natural that, and so a little different sound, but still sounds cool. Then straight line across seventh and ninth fret. Anything you do there sounds great, and keep on going. So two more straight lines, just uh, two frets in between each. Isn't that great? And then the last one. Sounds, yeah, kind of cool. A little, little bit different on that last one, last one. So uh, there you go. So uh, write something in Dadgad for me and, and send it to me. All right. So <laughs> yeah, just uh, drop, the, drop me a line on, 
on my YouTube or my email. Yeah. Well, we had some votes this uh, this week on what's going to be the next single. Uh, I think you've probably heard Sailing Dream right now with Susie Boggess singing that. And, well, I just love the way she sings. It's just, I'm such a fan of her, her voice and her as a person as well. Um, so we're, the, and so far the votes have come to t uh, Tides as the next single. So if you have any, any other thoughts, uh, let me know. For those of you who have the Sailing Dreams CD, or you can um, listen to clips on it um, on my website. Just go, go to the Sailing tab on the top and, and we'll be there. Well, lots of hellos coming in, I can see already. Uh, so before I, I play another tune, uh, yeah, let me just, oh yeah, David, David Gold says, cool, he's going to write something in Dad Yeah Tuning, right? And you can start off with that. It gives you some ideas. And then just let the song guide you after that. So you start off with the, with this concept. And then after that, listen to where the song goes. Like I was I was writing this one, uh, starting right on those frets and then kind of wandering down on the bass. thinking as I was playing that about going on tour and you know how I'm just feeling at home uh, wherever I go but uh, always thinking about eventually getting back to my little house here. There's a little garden, there's a little window and a little nose against the pane. In the wind a song that takes me away once again. However far away, no matter what the day, no matter which way I go, I'm always on my way home. Over ocean, stormy and deep, deserts blowing in the sun, Prairie grass breezes give way to mountains. But however far away, no matter what the day, no matter which way I go, I'm always on my way home. Whether here in your little hometown, or places I never thought I'd find I've held the hand that once seemed so different from mine But however far away No matter what the day No matter which way I go I'm always on my way I'm always on my way home. Ah, I haven't thought about that one for a while, so thanks for putting, making me think about all those tunes in Dad Gad. And there is one, actually, the one contestant for, uh, oh, lots, lots of lots of comments here, so thank you. Thank you, they're popping in so fast, I can't, I can't read them here. Yes, uh, a blessed week to you, a blessed holy week to, to you all as well, yes. <laughs> that's right, we are getting up to Easter uh, coming up. So that's one of my favorite holidays. I did the, the favorite holiday, uh, so I'll be going back. Um, and spending it with my parents and um, sisters. And, and we do the traditional Easter egg hunt, yes, and um, my parents run around and look for the eggs as well uh, as we do. You have to be fast uh, to get them before the, the little kids get them. You know, but, uh, so, 
uh, yeah, so breathing, breathing's all. And, um, oh, Marty says it's commonly called Celtic tuning. Yes, it's used in a lot of Celtic music, and you can see why. This is, uh, you know, this, uh, sometimes I play it with a capo on the second fret. I call that egad tuning, but <laughs> it's not quite egad, but uh, it goes along those lines. So we were saying that there's a tune that's on the new album, a contestant for the, the next one. And this one is in dad gad tuning, but Usually, when you're in this tuning, you're writing in the key of D. That's that's the easy one, right? That's you've got all these D's all over the place, right? Uh, so it was Frank, my student, who's probably uh, watching now, and he uh, had asked me to write a song uh, inspired by the hot air balloons taking off. And he said, "Well, why don't you write it in dad gad tuning?" So I thought to make it more interesting, I would do it in Dagad, but choose a different key, not two D. So I, I chose an A. So I, I so so I, I've got my A chord here. So these are the the three strings that are not touched here. They're still in regular tuning. So and then it gives me this this nice these nice little harmonies there with the open strings. And so I thought, well, I'll, I'll rock back and forth between A and G and see what happens. So this is. We call this Let Loose and Fly. On the recording, I have Phil Keggy playing with me. And, oh, he does all these really cool improvisations on that. It's on the Sailing Dream CD. So that is a little, a little different treatment on the dad gag. So there's, I wanted to share a story with you. This is a, one I haven't really told before because it's, it's a little on the personal side. When Brian and I were working on the 
album cover for Nightlight Daylight. I had hired him to do the artwork for that, and as some of you know, that's how we met. And um, I thought we could work by Skype. This is before I met him. We were just uh, corresponding for what we would do for the artwork. And you know, partly because I was really intrigued by his artwork. I'm like, how, how is this that his photo art is saying the same thing as my music? It's got a sense of lightness and um, attention to detail and humor and all these things that I just um, really gravitated towards. And so I was wondering what he looked like. So I said, let's work, work by Skype. And then, so it turned out that I thought he was pretty cute when I saw him on um, uh, Skype. And I wrote this tune and we recorded it. He came in to photograph in the studio when I was recording some of the parts with Victor Wooten and uh, Stanley Jordan came in to play some parts. Mark Kibble is um, the, the background vocals. And so the it was a song that I had written in 10-8 time. And I was, it was originally going to be an instrumental. And as I was thinking about Brian and about you know, something, some lyrics having to do with 10, I came up <laughs> with the idea of perfect 10. And so uh, it was written really about, uh, you know, about that. And the people in the studio didn't know that it was written about the photographer who was photographing them <laughs> as they were in the studio. So let me show you a clip of this. And so this was before we uh, really made it official that we were together. We were just, had really just met him. So we just started flirting. So uh, first Victor playing. And so they're getting warmed up, learning the parts, and they are just incredible musicians. Um, mix, less, less, less mix. mix. I'm at 50 right now. That's 40. Just a little less, 35 or something. Okay, now let me hear it with the track. Okay, ready to go. Here comes again. Here comes the count right here.
That was a while back now. It was 10 years ago, that project. And uh, some of you remember that one when that first came out. And that was uh, Degge Capo at the second fret. Uh, I guess that's Egad tuning, like they said. <laughs> so. And we had uh, some readings about uh, uh, asking about the Chet Atkins Convention. I'm uh, Hopefully, I'll be there at least for part of that time because I'm going to be teaching at a camp in Nashville just prior to that, and that'll bring me, that means I won't be on Brian's sailboat at that moment, <laughs> so uh, ho hopefully we'll see you there as well. And some shows coming up actually right in the area, um, as I'm going back to Illinois to uh, spend Easter with my family, I'm going to stop and do a little interactive concert at Tobias Music, that's a great little music shop right in Downers Grove, so if you're in within striking distance of Chicago's western suburbs, uh, do come out. That's a week from Saturday, I believe. Wow, we're coming up already. So, uh, and then we'll be heading out to Texas and Arkansas after that. So have a have a few days at home. There was a song that I wrote even before that uh, that one, Perfect Ten, that was inspired by building sandcastles. And uh, this was the first one that I wrote in Dad Gad Tuning. I just was first playing with it. I wanted to, something with a little different sound. So I said, well, I've heard about this tuning. I'll, I'll drop it into that tuning and see what happens. But it was inspired by, after building this, this beautiful sand castle, the, the next morning the waves had come and gone and, and just took away our beautiful castle. So we took the ruins of that castle and built another one, even more spectacular than the first. Just. Uh, my, my friend and his entire extended family we, we all built that together. It was just a beautiful experience. And it was the same time that uh, my friend Carlton had just uh, sold his house in Hawaii. And he was regretting selling that. He was missing his beautiful house. And I thought, well, why, why can't it be like for the experience, just like we had um, with those castles? And so this is the song that came from it. And I wrote this just before Hurricane Katrina, just days before the hurricane. So then I added a middle, vo middle verse to that, uh, that, uh, that tied it in. So it, it was, a lot of people had said that it, it, it spoke to them at that time. So this is, if I, it's been a while since I played this one, so uh, Castles in the Sand. For all of our toil, all of our plans, castles are built in the sand. And after the storm, after the waves, together we'll build it again. It's not for the castle, not for the sand, not for the view from sea to land. It's for a smile that you can bring it's just to build a beautiful thing the hurricane came just in a day 
The life that we knew washed away I watched as my hopes disappeared in the sand Until I saw one outstretched hand It's not for the castle, not for the sand Not for the view from sea to land It's for the people, the care you can bring It's just to build a beautiful thing As much as I've mourned possessions that passed Castles may not always last Built for the process, not for forever Built for the love we're building together it's not for the castle, not for the sand, not for the view from sea to land. It's for the people, the care you can bring. To live is to build a beautiful thing. To live is to build a beautiful thing. I originally wrote that song as, as the melody, right? But it was too high for me to sing, so I ended up singing a line lower than that. So my guitar ended up playing the harmony for me, uh, so I just kind of reversed what the har harmony and the melody were. And I've done that in, in several songs, so I, I write it on the guitar with one melody and then end up singing a different one. And uh, the, the song kind of builds that way. It, it, it builds upon itself, it kind of constructs itself. So I'll, I'll do, uh, do one more tune for you. And uh, thank you for, for uh, and, and greetings. And happy Monday to you all as well. So it, uh, it, does, it was a song that it, the message came about. It had, it had the, the concept. But as the as the lyrics started coming together, it uh, it became more than it was first intended to be. So it was you know one of those songs where the the song writes itself and you just get out of its way after a certain point. So and it tells you sometimes sometimes the song will tell you things that you didn't know yourself as, a, as you're writing it. That's a, a beautiful thing. So I want to wish you a, a wonderful week. And I'll uh, finish off with uh, this one that I call The Gathering. And um, I wrote this after the harp guitar gathering. So it was inspired by the uh, time when we all get together from all different harp, harp guitars, of different shapes and sizes and builds, and, and uh, exchange ideas. So it was a wonderful thing. And Stephen Bennett it was the one who first put this together. And so we've been enjoying our weekly, uh, I'm sorry, our yearly get-togethers ever since. Yeah. So uh, this is called The Gathering. Yeah.
All right, see you next week.